The Dragon Quest series has had a long and storied life, starting way back in the days of the NES and Famicom. Now, the series is back on a Nintendo platform, but it's not all turn-based slime-whacking and leveling up. Now it's slime-whacking and leveling up from a first-person perspective. Swords has that new Dragon Quest smell, but does it hold its value? <laughs> Towers and mirrors aside, this Dragon Quest is all about becoming a man. As your alter ego turns 16, he gets a sword and shoves out the door, making his way through a cave of mysteries, only to come back for a big thank you from the Queen. Mission accomplished, except the Queen has seemingly disappeared. The plot thickens with the traditional but charming quaintness that Dragon Quest is known for, threatening bad guys and good conquering evil in the end. The characters are the real heart of the tale. They're of the one-dimensional variety, but they manage to ham it up and get some mileage. Like your dad, a former master swordsman with a missing hand, and the absent queen's own foppish son. It's fun and sappy, but easy to enjoy, even if it's not exactly riveting. Mama! For this Wii outing, Square Enix scribbled all the bits of former quests and stitched them into an on rails sword slasher. This isn't really an RPG, despite its trappings. You will level up, earn gold, and march around town, but leveling is automatic. There isn't much to buy, and there's only one town, and walking around it is a chore. On the action side, as the plot unfolds, more and more areas will open up for adventure. Exploration is limited to the occasional fork in the path and clicking on rocks in hopes of finding some herbs. This means dreaded random battles are gone, but in their place are the same fights again and again, because along with leveling, grinding has also been included. You'll sometimes have to replay levels a few times to be tough enough to progress and push on to the end. It's not particularly awful in the arcade experience Champions Replay, but some of the levels are pretty long, and you'll be doing a lot of swinging through all eight levels. But the levels have their charms, and the occasional random enemy does appear. Plus, the boss battles offer a decent challenge. But the intricate depth is gone, replaced with a fairly literal hack and slash. It's a good thing slicing a slime in two doesn't result in more slimes, because you'll be slicing slimes enough as it is. Combat is all about slicing and dicing, and the occasional thrust. The slicing seems to be the issue. The Wiimote lets you lock onto a specific area on the screen, laser pointer style, but making the exaggerated slash without doing so is risky. Since this is kind of the core game mechanic, it's a little lame that you have to run a precursor light gun element before the melee is unleashed. On the flip side, defense is a lot of fun and deeper than it seems. The shield mechanic is a lot like playing goalie in Mario Strikers Charged, with even more emphasis on accuracy, where close but no cigar blocks can leave your shield chipped and gimped. Magic and companions shake things up a little, but they're really just glorified menu options, while the Master Stroke special moves freeze time and play out like WarioWare microgames. Minus the random zaniness. Finally comes the time spent in town between missions. It has a simple enough layout, but walking is a chore with the D-pad. Once you get used to locking onto your target before delivering your death swipes, the game picks up. Getting good at a level does offer its rewards, but just as the RPG elements won't be enough to satisfy grizzled role players, the swashbuckling doesn't have enough depth to satiate adrenaline junkies. <laughs> The slimes are symmetrical, the weapon merchant is appropriately beefy, and most of the monsters would be at home at Disneyland as giant costumes that hug you. Things look decent, but safe. We've already been wowed from the step up to the third dimension with O5's Dragon Quest VIII, and while we're not asking the Wii to deliver 4D visuals, it's another example of a third-party developer not pushing the tech envelope. At least, the voice acting is strong, and classic music and sound effects make for some nice fan service throughout the game. There really isn't anything out there like Dragon Quest Swords. Well, there's Samurai Warriors Katana, but we won't go there. 
It's not an ideal experience on any level. It's too long as an arcade game and too short as an RPG. But it's sure to find a niche, especially by trumpeting the brand it's built upon. If you want to get your real Dragon Quest fix, stay tuned for number 9 on the DS, but Dragon Quest Swords is a passable spin-off for fans. Bravo! Good! Do it like you mean it!